So uh, we clearly saw that the period of the northern and southern courts, the non Cho period, uh, was uh, very good for samurai in some ways, but it was also very bad for samurai in some ways. Um, tensions within the Ashikaga family um, and the weaknesses of their regime, uh, there were many weaknesses, and we'll talk about them more next week. Uh, it, it meant that the southern court uh, never, uh, well not never, uh, but for a while, uh, could resist the Muromachi effectively because it could exploit these divisions uh, within the Ashikaga family. And by the way, all samurai families had these kinds of uh, schemes or, um, I'm sorry, uh, differences uh, that uh, could be exploited by their rivals. And as we saw, so did the imperial family. This was certainly not unique to the samurai. But in the context of the power structure as it developed, uh, basically the southern court uh, was very good at doing uh, real damage just by being around and by being a source for disaffected people to go to. Uh, one of the more serious challenges to the uh, Muramachi Bakfu came very early on during the reign of the first shogun, uh, Ashikaga Takauji. Uh, this is known as the Kano Disturbance. Um, basically what happened was uh, this was a falling out between Ashikaga Takauji and Ashikaga Tadayoshi, two brothers uh, who were very good at uh, collaborating on the battlefield but proved to be um, incompatible as rulers. Uh, Takauji was the, saw himself as the senior partner in this arrangement, certainly he was shogun, uh, but Tadayoshi actually controlled many important government offices and uh, he absolutely hated uh, Kono Moranao and Kono Moroyasu, uh, these two brothers who were loyal servants of his brother, Ashikaga Takauji, the shogun. Uh, and he was very jealous of their power and uh, eventually he fell out with his brother, the actual shogun, um, he was outmaneuvered, made to resign, uh, shaved his head, became a monk, then escaped, basically raised another rebellion, uh, caught the Ko brothers, uh, killed them. And the reason that Ashikaga Tadayoshi was able to make this miraculous recovery is because he uh, went to the southern court. He had their support. Uh, if I win, uh, your majesty, then you will be the legitimate emperor and forget about that pesky northern line. Uh, and this was one of the, uh, as I said, the more serious crises of the Ashikaga Shogunate and um, looked like it could have brought it down. Uh, eventually um, Takauji regrouped and uh, defeated his brother, although he was for a time chased out of Kyoto uh, and out of Kamakura actually. It was a little embarrassing for him, uh, but he got his act together. And uh, this was certainly indicative of the kinds of um, uh, the kinds of troubles that the Ashikaga family could expect as long as the Southern Court was around. Once again, just by being there, they were they were dangerous. Um, also bad for the samurai for some of the same reasons. It was good for them. The central authority of the imperial family was indeed fatally compromised. Um, that meant uh, that the, um, well, it goes back to Kono Murnau's question, why do we need an emperor at all? Uh, why are the samurai fighting to be, uh, to be shogun? Uh, why bother with these puppets anyway, especially if these, uh, the southern branch is trying to overthrow us? And it's also bad in, in some other ways. Um, the imperial administration, uh, which was still responsible. They were still sending out governors and they were still responsible for doing some uh, important things in the countryside, certainly maintaining local um, connections between centers, um, encouraging uh, some of, um, some, well, uh, some competition basically to, to get back to Kyoto, uh, furthering the um, uh, cultural life of the country. Um, some of this also uh, was fatally compromised to the point that the emperors uh, really became almost broke and so did many courtiers. And the people who were, who had pretensions to culture and certainly pretensions to uh, power uh, who were broke, they could be easily manipulated and that wasn't necessarily good, uh, although once again it did have positive aspects. The direct power of the samurai increased, uh, even at the expense of increased chaos in the countryside. And general 
um, stultification of court life for a while. Um, the show in the state it really starts to break down and has to be reformed. And once again, we saw this as good because it did allow for direct samurai um, land tenure, uh, owning of land, rather. Uh, but it was also bad because there was increased chaos in the countryside. It was increasingly hard to make your voice uh, stick unless you were there on your land. Um, on horseback, traveling around, exerting your dues, or um, basically just, you know, getting your peasants to pay up, uh, and to behave, uh, and to stop peasants from flying to other locations, which certainly was a problem throughout the medieval period. Um, in every society I can think of where there was a war. So, not necessarily all good news on that front either, and of course betrayal becomes even more commonplace once again, this has its positive aspects for them as well. Uh, you can fly very high, uh, very quickly, and then, of course, you can be stabbed in the back, and many, many, many people were. And, of course, uh, the obvious bad thing, death. Uh, lots and lots of death, lots of battlefield death, um, but also treachery. And In general, it was a time when few samurai could feel secure. Uh, they used to demand loyalty oaths from their retainers, uh, written in blood, um, or at least, I'm sorry, signed in blood, uh, and then you would burn this, and you would drink this, and that's supposed to keep you from, um, uh, from betraying your lord. Very few people paid attention to any of these. Uh, you saw these desperate attempts to exert control that were oftentimes doomed. So, the, uh, the party had to end sometime. In 1392, um, we'll talk about this more next week, but basically uh, the northern line wins because the Ashikaga defeat the southern line, and this ushers in a period uh, between 1392, when the southern court is defeated, uh, and uh, 1467, uh, when you have the Ashikaga shoguns more or less able to exert their will over the length of the country. Um, this is a uh, a, a bakfu, a uh, well, a military government, uh, but it is also uh, increasingly uh, open to um, to using um, uh, basically the proceeds of business uh, for their for their functioning. Uh, it is based in Kyoto, uh, the Muromachi district of Kyoto. That's why it's called the Muromachi Bakfu. Uh, and it is close to uh, many great centers of trade, uh, many great merchants, uh, or many great networks of trade going throughout the country, the center of which is in Kyoto. Um, and the Ashikaga uh, take advantage of this. Uh, they also, uh, as I said earlier, confirm samurai ownership of uh, Shoan land. Uh, and uh, these ties between uh, samurai and their retainers, the gokenin, these housemen, uh, they become ever more uh, elaborate and ever more uh, articulated, and we'll talk more about that next time as well. Um, and also, uh, the system of local administration, uh, the Ashikaga at least try to bring this uh, on some kind of rational footing. Uh, they don't necessarily trust people uh, other samurai in the provinces who uh, to follow their orders. Um, so what they do is they send out uh, shugo daimyo, these local overseers uh, who basically get huge tracts of land to administer in the interests of the Ashikaga shoguns, and um, that can work uh, if your shogun is someone like, for example, Ashikaga Yoshimitsu, who once again will talk about more next week, uh, but uh, who is somebody who commands a lot of prestige and who can get his retainers to do what he wants. Um, if the shogun is a rather less capable person, or God forbid, a minor, uh, that became a very, very difficult task indeed. Uh, but that is the basis on which the Ashikaga managed to leverage enough power to finally defeat the southern court. So in the, uh, here's Godaigo, by the way, uh, going away. And uh, this is certainly something that was in the short-term interest of the Ashikaga, certainly as far as 
their perspective in 1392 uh, was concerned. And also, there was a much, much more uh, conscious and sustained effort on the part of samurai overall uh, to participate in arts. And these are many of the same arts as the imperial courtiers enjoyed. Uh, and that's certainly who these samurai learned from. And we will